Okay, today we'll start uh, reviewing Chapter 5 uh, of the CML workbook and, and talk about batching capability and using all the different variables <coughs> from models and entities and how to using some of the statistics and so on and so forth. Um, in this chapter we will learn how to do combined entities and routing entities using dynamic policy and processing time depends on queue sizes and so on and last one we're going to talk about how to using some of the output statistics uh, collecting them uh, first we're going to see the model okay the model looks like this as a menu uh, memory manu uh, manufacturing uh, facility uh, from the top, yeah, the memory boards arrive and exponential uh, arrival time um, to every two minutes. And the memory chips uh, down here is arrived about um, uh, exponential distribution every 30 seconds. And there are two different types of chips. 50% uh, belongs to type 1, 50% belongs to type 2. And there is a memory chips as, uh, board assembly and assembly each board with a four different chip of the same type uh, processing time follow uh, uniform distribution between two to four minutes and after that it go through one of the three uh, pa uh, packer and firmly pack them together and the processing time is follow triangular distribution uh, with the minimum possible time three minutes, most likely five minutes, maximum time so eight minutes. Then after they pack, they go to shipping and exit the system. So there's also some travel time uh, definitions right here underneath. And um, from memory board arrivals to the board assemblies, follow uh, travel time is uh, uniformly distributed about three to five minutes. When memory chips arrive, goes to the assembly boards about four to six minutes, and so on and so forth. And and this <clears throat> and also <clears throat> um, we summarize the we summarize the arrival information about the processing time information for both uh, the entire model right in this. So first we're going to talk about the combiner. We're going to have a mem uh, board coming up from the top and memory chip from the bottom. And we're going to using a combiner, combine them together. And this combiner has a two uh, input nodes. One is called a parent input node. And the other one we'll call the member input node. So later on we're going to see how we're going to perform this process. So let's start at this model first. Uh, we grab two different sources. Okay. Um, one we call the source of uh, memory board. The other source is for uh, chips. All right. When they arrive, and we have a two different type of entity. One entity we have uh, is a so-called bore, I think. memory board and the other entity is uh, entity chips <clears throat> okay we're going to visually change these two a little bit first the memory board I want to change to uh, symbol I downloaded uh, from Google. Um, 
me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Okay, this is, this is our memory board <coughs> in 3D as well. Zoom in. So the memory board looks like a memory board. And I need to put chips on it. Going back to change the memory chips. <coughs> Choose this one, and uh, it's too large, so I'm going to shrink a little bit so it fits on the memory board. So we have defined the memory board and memory chips now. <clears throat> okay, so make sure the first source is generating memory board um, based on exponential arrival every two minutes. Uh, every five minutes, uh, okay, two minutes, yes. Um, memory ch uh, chip source actually generates memory source, and following exponential distribution every thirty seconds, about half a minute. And also, once they arrive, they go into a combiner. Going to use this combine it <clears throat> and give some oops, should be a time pack <clears throat> the time pass from source to the memory board we see that uh, they have a different travel time uh, process. Okay, the process from mem uh, memory board arrivals to memory board assembly is about unit from three to five, and chips arrival to the board assembly is about four to five, six, four to six minutes. So here the travel time path. To zoom in, give you the travel time. <clears throat> to three to five minutes. <clears throat> Here. <coughs> and the travel time is four to six minutes. All right, we we'll finish this. And this part is easy, and uh, we've done this many times already. So now we're going to show the actually memory chips has a two different <coughs> two different uh, chip types. So we're going to define a so-called stay variable for each one of the uh, model. Um, we call them chip type. Okay, the chip types <coughs> is the integer, either one or two. So initially I'm going to set it to one. And that's all there is to it. And Okay, after we assign this chip type for each one of the model entity, we're going back to the model and going back to the source. For before they exit here, I need to randomly assign a chip type. For example, I need to assign, now we have model chip type, yeah, right here. I represent different type of uh, what type of um, uh, chips is this? Of course, this is follow a random distribution with the probability <coughs> of 
Well, 50% are type 1, then 50% are type 2. All right, so we can also use this to same tricks to add a symbol for the second one on the chips. Let me zoom in a little bit for this guy. Second one, I'm going to using a different color. So I have red chips represent different type, uh, sec, uh, type two of the chips and so on and so forth. And chip one will represent by black and so we can distinguish both of them. And also <clears throat> In the combiner, and each one of the board needs a four different chips. So here we have batch quantity on the combiner. We call it uh, four of those. And also I'm trying to matching with a member was a specific criteria. So I need <coughs> them to match with the chip type. So they, their chip type has to be matched in order to move on. And the rest of them we just say. So the, high, uh, the part I change on this, uh, on this combiner actually uh, is a bolder right here. So we can see this is happening. Okay, we also, <coughs> we call the bore assembler. Okay, call this guy for assembly. So we've done this part correctly. And then after that, we have need to add three different packer. So we call this guy packer one. And it's processing time. Okay. I'm going to create a time path right here. And travel time is <coughs> random per distribution. Mean mode max is still. I'm going to change that to 10, 12, and <clears throat> 15. And Packer times is a triangular distribution. Okay. According three minutes, five minutes, or eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And the board assembly processing time follow a uniform distribution. Between two to four minutes. All right, so here we have Packer two, Packer three. Then we adding a sync over called shifting. And travel time for each one of those. Our travel time is 3.5 minutes for now. <clears throat> so I 
highlight three of them and type in the travel time altogether and each individual one will have exactly the same <clears throat> travel time okay so this part talks about what is the how to create a model basically real quick okay now model is building done so here we need to change the way to uh, after the assembly got combined we want to see if we can balance distribute our uh, dispatching from the board assembly to packing process with a balance of low so I want to do is for e when the parts coming out of <clears throat> the combiner and based on each work uh, the workload or the line uh, the queue lines in the pro number of processing lines in each one of the packer station and I distribute that so to do that I'm going to first define a list of a uh, packing sta station so I'm using a definition called list and and the list basically is the no for the list. So first I'm just choosing Packer 1, Packer 2, and Packer 3. So I'm adding a no list, basically talking about going to the input portion, input buffer for Packer 1, going to input buffer for Packer 2, or input buffer for <clears throat> Packer 3. So this is a candidate no list. I have, I'm going to call this uh, portion called list of a packer. Okay. And they are, the list is uh, consists of a nodes instead of other things. You can have a list of object, list of a string, or list of a transporter you can choose from. And we'll talk about <clears throat> that in a few seconds how to use that <clears throat> so over here going back to the process <clears throat> after we define this we're going to <clears throat> choose the <clears throat> destination type <clears throat> Instead of using continues, I'm going to select from a list, and this list is just the one I defined it, Packer list. <clears throat> okay, and here I have a so called select condition, and, and select go is I'm trying to using smallest value first. <clears throat> and choosing the expression. Here the expression we want to do is we want to see combining the parts transfer on the on this route plus the num uh, number of parts stay on this uh, input queue, input buffer, and number of parts actually being processed. So all together is the smallest I'm going to try to assign. So here I'm going to do the candidate note portion. Okay, the possible input no um, for number of travel on the link and routing in. Number of part already routing in this this link plus Sorry, this is server um, input buffer. How many we have in the input buffer already? And number of waiting.
Okay, so number waiting in the input buffer and plus server content processing content par is in the processing and number of waiting to be processed so the dis decision point is either number of pars routing into this route number of par waiting in the queue and number of par waiting in to be processed over here so <clears throat> all three combined together make my decision so and the last part I'm going to since these three are the same I'm trying to see if I can define a property call expression property travel time to exit okay so we call it travel time to exit and here I'm trying to say is 3.5 minutes to begin with okay um, or we can use different render number right here that's fine um, then I'm going back to choose these three paths instead of a travel time using 3.5 I'm going to call it travel to exit time okay <clears throat> so here if I click on the any blank space on the part and we'll show the model and the model property has the 3.5 time travel time and here I can change to 4.5 or I can change to uh, so-called sorry uh, render number <coughs> based on uniform distribution for example um, then we say eh, three to four minutes range so we can change that automatically change the travel time for these <clears throat> okay so I think we're done uh, the model it's ready to roll and let's save it and see if it runs the part you can see the parts uh, memory board coming this way and memory chips coming that way and to make it faster and after they combine they go to each one of the place And based on the congestion of each models, they have their own uh, distribution manner. I think I forgot to put in the travel time for uh, these two links. Let's go back real quick and stop the simulation. Check the travel time. Actually, I think it's per distribution. And copy from here. Per distribution with uh, five minutes, seven minutes, and ten minutes for this one, and four minutes, five minutes, and seven minutes for that one. So I see how that worked again.
And you can see that right now, this snow actually dynamically decide uh, which packers to go to based on their congestion, their current workload. <clears throat> okay, so here it is very easy to figure that one out. Mm, something. Okay, it looks like the travel time right here. I need to specify a unit. It's time units, basically is minute. So, see if it improves the travel time a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, make more sense now. <clears throat> Okay, and finish our first section of the lecture. <clears throat>